Two passages I want to look at. Two passages I want to look at. Mark the 10th chapter. Mark the 10th chapter. Uh, Jesus is doing ministry and um, he encounters a person that we sometimes refer to as the rich young ruler. The rich young ruler. Um, and in Mark the 10th chapter, Mark the 10th chapter, here are the words that we have. Let's read it together, beginning at verse 17. As he was setting out on a journey, a man ran up to him and knelt before him and asked him, good teacher, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? But Jesus said to him, why do you call me good? No one is good except God alone. You know the commandments, do not murder, do not commit adultery, do not steal, do not give false testimony, do not defraud, honor your father and mother. And he said to him, teacher, I have kept all these things from my youth. Now Psalm 84, let me just read it for your hearing. Psalm 84, and Psalm 84 is this wonderful, it's this wonderful Psalm and it talks about the blessing, it talks about the blessing of being in the house, in the sanctuary. That there is something special about being in the house. It's that passage that says, I'd rather be a doorkeeper in God's house than, than elsewhere. Towards the end of Psalm 84, here's how it reads. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from those who walk uprightly. O Lord of hosts, blessed is the man who trusts in you. Please be seated. So we got a little bit of feedback. We got a little bit of feedback. I need you to I need you to turn this down just a little bit. A little bit of feedback. Thank you again. That's much better. That's better. Probably turn it down just a little bit more. And so I'm going to try to get through this really quickly because the, the youth are coming back with the, um, the answers to the problem of the world. And so I really just want to talk today. Think about this for a second. If you think about humans, are we inherently good or evil? If I would ask you that question. Humans, are we inherently good or evil? And I believe that the Bible gives an answer to that question for believers. I don't believe it's just a kind of a, a maybe thing or a kind of thing. I believe that the Word of God, the Word of God is definitive, is definitive about whether we are inherently good or evil. And so when we look at this passage from Mark the 10th chapter, it's a hard one because if I asked Dr. McDaniel, she said, you know, if I asked you, I might ask you the question, are you good? And the way we answer that question, everybody says, yeah, I'm good, I'm good. You know, that just means, am I all right? But if I asked Dr. McDaniel the question, am I good? Because I've heard her answer the question. She says, no, I'm not good. I want to change her mind today. I want to change her mind today. Because she's thinking about, she's thinking about this passage. She's thinking about this passage, and we should be. Because in this passage, when Jesus encou encounters this rich young ruler, the rich young ruler says, good teacher. And Jesus comes back to him and says, no one is good except for God. And so very often, very often, we look at that, we look at that, and we say, well, that's what Jesus said, and so I'm not good. And so then it becomes perplexing because am I good or am I evil? Because the Bible says, okay, that I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. But then it also says that my heart is deceitfully evil. But then it says on one side, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And then it says that I'm a wretched sinner. Which one? I'm confused. So am I good or evil? Which one? And so, now I'm just going to go through this quickly. In Psalm 14, here's how, here's why Jesus would have said, here's why Jesus would have said that no one is good except for God. Because Jesus was familiar with the Psalms. He was familiar with the Psalms. But we got to look at all of it. Look at what it says. It says, the fool says in his heart, there is no God. Now he's talking about the fool. He's talking about the unbeliever. It says they are corrupt. Their deeds are vile. There is no one who does good. That was also in the context of that moment. The Lord looks down from heaven on all my, mankind to see if there are any who understand, any who seek God. All have turned away. All have become corrupt. There is no one who does good. And so Jesus understands Psalm 14, but keep reading. Not even one. 
do all these evil do doers know nothing? They devour my people. As though eating bread, they never call on the Lord, but there, there they are, overwhelmed with dread, for God is present in the company of the righteous. You evildoers frustrate the plans of the poor, but the Lord is their refuge. Oh, that salvation for Israel will come out of Zion. When the Lord restores, when the Lord restores, when the Lord restores his people, let Jacob rejoice and Israel be glad. And so if you look at this passage, I don't want to go through it quickly. Does this no good in, every, in everybody, is it universal? Or are there distinctions made in this passage? I would have you to, to look at in this passage, he talks about those who are evil, those who are oppressing others, but then he also talks about my people. He talks about the righteous because God cares about the poor, Luke 4, 18, and then God restores people. And so he is making this distinction between those who do no good and those who might elder P be righteous. He is making this distinction. I just want you to know because you're either on one side or the other. And then, you know, there's this other passage that has been preached on and taught. Behold, I was shaping and born in iniquity. I am bad. I'm always bad because that's how I was born. Let's look at that passage. Let's look at Psalm 51. Psalm 51. Have mercy on me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies out of my transgressions. This passage is written when David has done something really bad. He says, he says, wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin, for I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against thee, thee only, have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest, and be clear when thou judgest. Behold, and here's the passage that, that often comes out. Behold, I was shaping in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. And if that's all I hear, then I've got no hope. If that, is, if that is the frame of reference in my life, that I was born and shaping in iniquity, then how can I get better? Because that's who I am. That's who I am. But sometimes you got to read and, and, and don't just listen to what Gibson gives you or what some, a preacher gives you, but you got to read the rest of the text and put it in context. you got to read the fine print. Let's read the fine print. After that, look at what it says. Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward parts and in the hidden part, thou shalt make me to know wisdom. Yeah, I messed up, but you're going to make it better. Verse 7, purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me to hear joy and gladness, that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Hide thy face from my sins, and blot out all my iniquities. Look at verse 10. Look at verse 10. Because if you think that you're all bad, if you think that, yeah, you came out of something, yeah, there's some stuff that happened in your life and my life, but there is a God who brings you out and brings you to a wide place. Look at what verse 10 says. It says, cast not away from thy presence and take not the Holy Spirit from within me. Before Pentecost, before Pentecost, they were talking about, David understood that there could be something on the inside of me even though I messed up. Because I know there's some people who messed up. We talked about this yeah. We talked about this yesterday. I know there's some people. Gibson has messed up a lot. And I believe that there's some other people in the house who've messed up. And you, like I said yesterday, you got a number or you got many numbers or, or you, had, you had some fentanyl last night or you, you sent the wrong text message this morning or you looked at the wrong website this morning or your mind is wandering right now. And so, but the God that I serve, the God that I serve, he says that, that there is his spirit on the inside. But look at verse 12. He says, Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and uphold me with thy free spirit. And so, 
Now, some of you, you could look, you could say, well, what about, Pastor, what about Jeremiah 17, 9? The heart is desperately wicked. That's in there too. That's in there too. But I serve a God who can change hearts. And David was saying, create in me a clean heart, oh God, and renew the right spirit. And so which side of the, which side of the room am I going to be on? And then so pastor might be saying, well, pastor, are you saying that? That because God has done something in my life, I should start bragging and I should say, man, I'm good and I'm all that. And I'm, no, and first, and I'm not going to read it. First Corinthians, the first chapter. First Corinthians, the first chapter is the next one. And so um, what, what Paul says in first Corinthians, the fifth chapter, he says that he uses people who are not incredibly talented, some people who have been foolish, some people who've done crazy things. He says, I, I, I use, I use, I use people who were drunk. I use people who were adulterers. I use people who were murderers. I use prostitutes. And then when, when, when I, when I've used them, look at, look at the end of 1 Corinthians, the first chapter. 1 Corinthians, the first chapter, um, beginning at, at verse 30. But it is due to him that you are in Christ Jesus who became to us as wisdom from God and righteousness, and righteousness, there's another group, there's another group, and sanctification, those who are set apart uh, for service and redemption, so that just as it is written, let the one who boasts, boast in the Lord. So if there's something good on the inside of you, it's okay to say that there's something good. If God has given you some talent, it's okay to say, I got some talent, and not to hide back in the, in, the, in the cut. It's okay to say, I have the talent, but always give it to the Lord. To God be the glory that I always boast in the Lord. I don't boast in what I can do. And so I'm not saying here, and you can, you know, in your spare time, should I be arrogant? No. Must I be humble? Yes. I always have to give God the glory. Matthew, the fifth chapter, the 16th verse. Anybody know that verse? Let your light so shine before men and women so that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is heaven. No, no, there is good on the inside of us, and it has to come out. It has to come out, and we give God the glory. 2 Corinthians, the fifth chapter, because I believe that there, you know, you may have heard all your life that you're not good enough. Your parents may have told you that you're not smart. The teachers told you that you are never going to be better than a C student and you're not going to graduate. You may not be able to read now. But in 2 Corinthians, the fifth chapter, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation, not will be, is a new creation. And then it also says the old will pass away. The old might pass away. The old has passed away. That evil, that evil on the other side, that's supposed to pass away. Now somebody will say, well, Pastor, uh, I, I know that, that Paul says that, that we struggle with the flesh every day. So that's what the Word says, and we do struggle with the flesh every day. But the Holy Spirit on the inside of us should win that battle every day. Because... If my tagline is that I keep sinning because I'm struggling with the flesh every day, then maybe I am allowing my flesh and my thoughts and my desires to be more important than the lead of the Holy Spirit. Second Timothy, the first chapter. I ain't trying to mess with nobody for real, for real. For real. And so, you might say, is there good on the inside of you? Is there good on the inside of you? I want to answer the question, are you good or are you evil? And the Word of God makes it clear that we have good, inherent good on the inside of us. Now, I'm, let me go. I, I missed this first point. I mean, what does it mean to be good? What does it mean to be good? When, when Jesus is talking to the rich young ruler, if you look at that term in the original text, to be good means to be loving generous and kind at the core. And so if you say that, is there anybody who is always loving, generous, and kind, who does it all the time? It's God. 
Now, am I loving, generous, and kind all the time? No, Sister Jones, I, I try sometimes, Sister Jones, but, I, but I'm not, not there. And so that's why you could say, is anyone good? That's what he says, the anyone good is only one who does it all the time, who does it all the time. And so if we go, if we go to, uh, to Psalm, uh, if we go to 2 Timothy 1, look at what Paul says. He says, protect through the Holy Spirit who dwells in us, the treasure which has been entrusted to you. What Paul is saying, there's a treasure on the inside of you if you are a believer. I don't think y'all believe that because Paul also writes, I believe it's in 2 Corinthians 4, he says that there is a treasure in earthen vessels. And so, if Paul says that there's a treasure on the inside of me, and I need to protect it and also expose it, I need to protect it from the attacks that would keep from letting my light shine, I believe that. I, be I believe, and I don't care if you don't believe it, I believe that God has placed a treasure on the inside of you. Let me say that again, let me say it again. I believe that God has placed a treasure on the inside of you. That there is a treasure on the inside. If you didn't catch my eyes for real, I looked at everybody. I looked at everybody. There is a treasure on the inside of you, which means by definition, if you're a believer and God is your maker, Jesus is your Lord and Savior, and the Holy Spirit is on the inside of you, that you are good on the inside and that you are inherently good because the Word says to protect the treasure. Psalm 68. Well, actually, let me go, let me go back to Psalm 84. I'm just trying to get this done. So, in Psalm 84, and if you put things, if you put things on your um, refrigerator in your kitchen, put this passage on there. Psalm 84, verse 11. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. Can you pull up the picture? Which means that God gives me all the vitamin D that I need. He gives me everything that I need on the inside. He's a sun. But he's also a shield. He protects me. He protects me. And then it says that he gives me grace and glory. Other translations say honor and favor. That's something good on the inside. And then it says, no good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. Listen, put that on your refrigerator. No good thing, no good will God will hold. Listen, put that, tape it to your forehead. Put it on your dashboard. You want to be encouraged in a bad moment? Read this passage. You need something? Read this passage. He's a son and a shield, and he will withhold no good thing from me. Man, I could feast on that all the time. I'm just talking, y'all. I'm just talking, y'all. I'm just talking. Y and so the treasure is that God is— go to the second picture. Go to the second picture. I like this picture. There's this, there's this sister. She's walking the beach. And so the sun is coming down but she's got a hat on her head. So she understands that she's getting what she needs. And if she needs to walk on water, if she needs to walk on water, if you got a week where you need to walk on water, God will equip you to walk on water. And God, and, and look what it says, he will not hold from those favor and honor. The God will give us favor and honor. That's the kind of God that I serve. I don't deserve it. But he wants to bless us. He is just that good. And so, if he's giving me all the good things that I need, the only issue then becomes whether I'm going to let it come out. Whether the love, 
the generosity and the kindness will come out. There is inherent good on the inside of the believer. Let me go last point, last point, because the young people are coming in here. Psalm 68, Psalm 68. And so in the Bible, you know, we got all these songs in, 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 in Christian faith that talks about, and, and you all sang some of it, how awesome God is. And so I know that God is good, and God, because we're made in His image, and because God is generous, that we have good on, our in, on the inside of us. But I also need you to know that not only is God good, but God is awesome. God is awesome, because when we talk about good, you know, good is just kind of middle of the road, and, but it's more than that from a biblical perspective. But in, in, in Psalm 68, which also talks about being with the believers and in the sanctuary, Psalm 68, look at what it says here in the 34th verse. Ascribe strength to God. So say, know that God has strength. His excellence is over Israel, and his strength is in the clouds. Look at verse 35. Oh God, you are more awesome. Awesome doesn't appear often in the Bible. It really doesn't. This is one of the few times. It says, you are more awesome than your holy places. You are more awesome than the building. You are more awesome than all of the temples and synagogues because wherever you are, it's a good place. And your presence can't just be in the building, but it's got to go outside the building with the people that you place goodness in. Because God's awesomeness is not evident to the world unless those of us who have light go out into the world outside of 6114 Francis and shine the light in the dark places. And so the awesomeness of God, the awesomeness of God becomes evident when he works in a wretch like me and I'm no longer a wretch. I am not a sinner, but I'm a saint because the word says so. And I go out declaring the goodness, not boasting in myself, but boasting in what God has done for me. And look at what it also says. It says, oh God, you are awesome, more awesome than your holy places. The God of Israel is he who gives strength and power to his people. How can you say that there's no good on the inside if the word of God says that he gives you strength and power? Like, there's no way, there's no way. And I don't care what your boss said. I don't care what your parents said. I don't care what people are saying now. I don't care if your esteem is low. You have good and great things on the inside. Look at the names of God translation. It says, acknowledge the power of Elohim, that great creator. His majesty is over Israel and his power is in the skies. Elohim, the El, the God is awe-inspiring. He's awe-inspiring in this holy place. He gives strength and power to his people. Thanks be to Elohim. It's not good enough if God gives me everything that I need and he doesn't withhold any good thing that I need if his awesomeness does not inspire me to do great things. That's why I'm leaving this, y'all, because the young people come back in. If God has been really good to me, and I'm just kind of going through the motions. I'm not serving in ministry. I'm not helping others. And I'm just coming, I come to this as a consumer. And I'm not connected to anything. And I'm not helping somebody else get better. That I don't come to a, um, come on, tell them to come on in. I don't come to a home going celebration because I don't know the person who died. Don't I come to support the living? And if there's someone in here who knows everybody in this congregation, and I only come when my team is up, but I don't come when my team is up, I only come when I'm singing the solo, I'm only coming sometimes, and I don't have anything to give because I have no good in me, and I'm inherently evil, and, and I, you know, I've had all these failures. No, bring them in, bring them in, bring them in, bring them in. Our God, we are inherently good as believers, and God is awe-inspiring. He is awe-inspiring. He inspires us. Come on up. Come on up up front. 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 It's your show now. Gibson needs to sit down. And, and, and so we have good on the inside of us. And our awesome God inspires us to do great things. No, come on up. Come on up. Come on up. Come on up. Come on. Come on up. Come, come on. Stand up here. Stand up here. Stand up here. 
stand up here. No, I want you all to stand up here. Just, just stand behind me. Stand behind me. Come on, stand behind me. Come on, stand behind me. So if they're mad at me, I know that you all got my back. Yeah, if it, yeah you can't. If they're mad at me, I know y'all got my back. Now, more important than that, they're not mad at me. What's, what's really good is we want to hear the great things that you all have for today. Why? Wow, they all got paper. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> wow. Um, Daniel, you want to frame this at all? You want to frame this about what happened? And, and, and then we'll hear from them, or you want to hear from them? Okay, you said you wanted to go first. You said you are going to go first. Okay, leader, leader. Leaders lead. Leaders lead. Leaders lead. And so what I need you to do, whoever is going to talk, whoever is going to talk, just um, give us your name and your loud, loud voice. They have, they are inherently good. They are, they have good on the inside of them. They are inherently good because sometimes we think that children are good until they become preteens. And then something happens. No, they are inherently good. And our awesome God has inspired them to do great things, just like he's inspired us. Come on, come on. My name is Trey John, and I want to do um, rap for um, gospel rap and trying to change the community of rap to God. And I want to help the youth. And my last one is to find affordable houses for the homeless. Hey, Rashad, Rashad, Rashad. Come down, Rashad, come down, come down. Do you know that Rashad is a rapper? Were you here the Sunday that he rapped? Okay, so, you know, so that's kind of what Rashad is doing. He's, you know, he's trying to, he was rapping in the world, and now he's, he's you know, he's up there working in AV today. But he, he wants to change. He wants to make sure that, that, that you can be heard. And you want affordable housing? Why do you want affordable housing? Because the home, the homeless don't have nowhere to go, so I, I'll, I'll try to find an affordable house for them to go and help them find a job. So, Sister Hedden, I'm not trying to put you on the spot, but Sister, so we have somebody who's a realtor in here, and she, she kind of agrees with, with, with some of you. So, at, at some point, like, I would have you meet her. And so, we, and, and Sister Rios, who's not here today, we are working on some affordable housing. But so, we have... We have four homes that need to be renovated in this neighborhood. And at least two of them are supposed to be for the homeless. And so when we do this, I'm going to ask you to come by with a hammer or something and to help us build it. Okay? Okay. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. So he wants to rap. Would you help him rap in the do? And hey, we can get you set up. I, I know I, I need to hear some bars, first of all. We ain't, we ain't just about to put in you. I need to hear some bars. You got some beats? Okay. Well, I, I, got, I got some people that can, can get that going for you, okay? Who else? Who else wants to come? Who else wants to come? Um, DJ. My name is DJ, and I don't, I, like, um, we mean stop polluting the world because, like, it hurt our planet. We may stop polluting ocean because, like, it, like it's dangerous, and we need that water to drink stuff. Cause like we, we unfilter the water. We don't want trash in our water, or in our on our earth. It'll kill our, it'll kill earth. It'll kill every. It'll kill some plants, and it's not healthy for the planet. So. Brother Jonathan and Sister Molly, would you help DJ? So we can do, I know coming up on what the, the Hyacinth Block Club is going to meet here. We're going to do some stuff in the neighborhood on that day. But let's, let's make part of that effort cleaning the neighborhood. And so, you know, so DJ, so we're going to do some things picking up here. But we, we need to make it bigger so that we can educate all of us about using fewer plastic bags and stuff like that. And, and so that's, that's great, man. That's great. That's great. Uh, my name is Wyatt. 
and I would then help the planet plant trees, invent a car, get rid of vapes. So you you want to you want to plant more trees. You want to invent a car. You want to invent a new car. So it, what kind of car is it going to be? Electric. It's going to be better than an electric car. And then the last thing, the last thing, what's the last thing you said? Get, get rid of vapes. Get rid of vapes. Get rid of vapes. Here's my new assistant. He will call you this week if you're vaping. Because I believe his voice will be more persuasive than mine. If you're vaping, start vaping. But, but, but you know, look back at them. So do you think everybody, anybody in here who's vaping, should they stop vaping? Just tell them to stop vaping. Yes. Why should they stop vaping? It's bad for your lungs. All right. It's good. It's good. It's good. I know we run a little bit over, but, it, you know, praise God. My name is Zion, and what I want to stop is littering and pollution. I don't want any more smoking or vapes, like he said, and to ban weapons, because more kids these days are using them for bad reasons and reasons that should not, that should not be legal. Um, also, I want to ban in inappropriate movies, ads, and shows. And also, I would think that making a movie of the whole of every single Bible that, is, that has ever been created so people can go closer to God. And so let me give you this. So in our society, we might or might not be able to ban things, but what we can do is what you just said, is we can have more good news than bad news. And so, and we can also know that we should not be looking at the bad stuff, but we should look at the good stuff. Great job, Zion. Great job. I want to help the world by um, picking up trash in my own um, neighborhood. Excellent. What's your name? Derek. Derek, great job. Anything else? No. Nah. Great job, great job. When we do that, we'll do it together. My name is Josiah. I want to make the world a better place by building better cop cars that are faster to stop police chases and keeping people up at night. I also want to have cops go online and look at illegal sites and ban them and find the one who's doing them and make them stop. Also, to give police dogs trackers and take their armor and give it, and then give the dog to a criminal so they can track them down. Wow, so better law enforcement, better relationships with police officers. Good job, good job, Josiah, good job. Uh, hello, um, so my own goal is to be one of the um, few black women to be a pro volleyball player and inspire like young black girls to be like, do sports, yeah, basically. So professional volleyball is gonna be bigger. It's gonna be big like soccer. Yeah, sure, yeah. Excellent, excellent, <laughs> love it, love it. Next, next. My name is Wanaya and I wanna make the world a better place for helping poor people make houses for poor people, and make sure that they're safe. Make sure that they're safe. Excellent, excellent. Hi, my name's Elena, and how I can help the earth, I want to teach kids good examples so when they grow up, they won't be bad people and do all, like, drugs or, like, holding illegal weapons and stuff. That's what I want to do. So you want to be a good example to your peers. So good grade, it's great job. Great job. Thank you. Great job. Give us your name. My name is Nzinga, and I want to stop pollution because it's not good for the animals in the air. 
I want to stop swearing because it's not good for children on social media. I want to stop violence in movies because it's not good for children's surroundings. So there should be all the violence in movies and the videos because it's not good for us. Yeah. My name's Faith, and one of my things were to listen to your elders. They always know more than you, and they have more wisdom. Wow. <laughs> this was the old soul plant in the group. <laughs> um, my name is Ashley. One of my uh, things was to, like, create community peer groups for, like, at-risk youth, so, like, you could have a non-at-risk youth with another at-risk youth. So like a buddy system, basically. So buddy system, so somebody who is struggling with being out there and doing drugs and guns with somebody who's not struggling, but of the same age. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what would that do? Just, it would provide a, like, a role model role. And so they can see like, oh, how you, how you should live in the right way to do stuff. Because if I'm messing up, but I see you doing it the right way, then I might say, well, I want to do that too. Good job. Good job. Give us your name. My name is Antoine. To make dinosaurs a b to come back to life. You want to make dinosaurs come back to life. And, and what else to teach about dinosaurs? To learn about dinosaurs. And to learn and to teach about dinosaurs. Wow. <laughs> Who did we hear from? Do we hear from you? Anything? You want to go? Okay. So my three things were to get more people to exercise their body to become healthier, and then introduce pe more uh, youth to a variety of sports and help others to be more mentally stronger. Um, my goals are to, oh, Alan, my goals are to clean up the trash, help out the community, and get rid of vapes. Um, my name is Josh, and I want to make something to clean up trash for communities. My name is Jariah, and one of the things that I wrote was to add more recycling bins and trash cans around communities to clean it up so it's not dirty or there's no more like infections given away to people on the side of the road. Excellent, excellent, excellent. You ready? My name is Malachi, and I want to help the homeless shelter. You want to help the homeless to be in shelter? Did we miss anybody? Did we miss anybody? So I need somebody to pray. I need one young person to come up and pray. So I need one young person to come up and pray. Come on, come on. And so what they just gave, they just provided an offering. They just provided an offering. Really, they just provided an offering. They're saying, Lord, here's what we're giving. And so we always want to thank God for the gift and to consecrate the gift. But I need, I need one of the young people to come and pray. I need one of the young people to come and pray. And so we heard these incredible gifts. And so I want you to, to pray to God, to, to really kind of thank God for these gifts, but also to make sure that these gifts become real, that these gifts become real, that all of us will work together uh, so that we'll do God's will. I pr for Heavenly Father, I pray that all of these gifts will come real, and they practice on their gifts, and they try to do the best they can to make that come true and help everybody in the neighborhood. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 We're going to ask if everybody would stand. If everybody would stand on the end, everybody would stand at this time. Anything you want to say?
Do you want to say something, Kyla? Come on, come on, come on, come on. Well, Kyla, what, give us your thoughts. We didn't hear from you. I'm so glad to see you here. Hi, um, I'm Makaya. Uh, we can use social media apps to spread more awareness about mental health. To use social media to spread more good news and information about mental health. Yes, yes, yes. Well, um, so we don't think that our children understand or that they don't have desires. They do. They do. You have great treasure on the inside of you, and God has caused you to do awesome things. I don't, I don't know where Ivan is, but Ivan in the back, and so Ivan talked about, you know, surrender and doing great things. And so as you saw some examples, whether it's Ashira or Daniel, or Ivan, or Minister Killings, or others, or Jonathan and Molly. You have examples of people who've done great things. And so God has you on the path to do great things.